Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Ah, that, uh, that lyrics I heard from, you know, Dr. Christine, when I asked him, how can you do surgery so fast, even though you do not hurry? Um, he told me that lyrics, and that become one of my models when it comes to the surgery. Uh, that I learned from, in, in, learned from him when I, I went to the Birmingham to learn how to do the you know, penile prostate surgery. So when I went to his uh, OR and his practice, I learned many things. But uh, what struck me most uh, is that uh, he micromanaged his own team who is dealing with the pre-op of the patient or surgery and the post-op of the patient. All through the courses, same dedicated, highly educated team. I call them as a Birmingham foreskins. <laughs> they were dealing with them all the time. It's a, I'll say, a, the, the flow is, I'll say, flawless. So I was able to tell that Dr. Christine spent a lot of time to set that kind of, you know, settings. And uh, he was, his dedication to his patient is uh, uh, hard to say in just, uh, you know, a few sentences. In the later days, uh, I wish that I can invite him to Seoul so that I can learn more to my practice and learn more from him as well. I do expect that that day, that someone, someday like will come soon and I hope to see him again. And I just can't wait to see him uh, to tell me more about uh, how to do a better practice. So after I went to, uh, and after I was able to uh, train by him and his, his own team, I came back to the Seoul and uh, to my practice and I was trying to do the same thing as he do. Brian, you know that uh, imitation is the best, a uh, sincerest form of flattery, <laughs> right? So uh, I want to do the good service to my patients, good serving to my patients just like you do. Thank you for showing me, showing me that, Brian. So the first decade of my career, the first 10 years or so, I practiced general urology. And then about 10 years ago, I really began to focus on men's sexual health because I found that for me, that's how I could have the greatest impact on my patients' lives. I could take men who were suffering from erectile dysfunction, whose relationships were suffering, and know that I could get them back to full sexual function. And that gave me a great gratification. And I think it really helps me believe that I really am making a difference in a man's life. And really, we know that probably the best way to treat erectile dysfunction in the long term is going to be a penile prosthesis. And a penile prosthesis, when done in the hands of an experienced, well-educated surgeon, is a low-risk procedure, and it provides tremendous patient satisfaction, and it's really the only treatment that gives a long-term permanent cure for erectile dysfunction. So for the patient and for me, it's tremendously satisfying. Erectile dysfunction is something that when a man has erectile dysfunction, not only is it a physical problem, an inability to attain an erection, but there's a deep emotional pain that a man suffers. We know that men oftentimes, they can see themselves in how well they function sexually. There's something in a man's brain and a man's heart that makes him feel that if I can't function sexually, I'm less of a man. So I think it can be difficult for men to come forward and talk about this. The job of someone like myself or someone like Dr. Park, who are true experts, is that we can help patients begin to express those things, begin to talk about them, begin to seek treatment, because only by seeking treatment can men be treated. And again, surgeons like myself and Dr. Park, we have the expertise and we have the desire to treat these men and to make their life better. So I would encourage men with erectile dysfunction to step forward and to seek out true experts like us because we can treat you, we can help you. There's no question that in medicine, and particularly something like penile prosthesis surgery and men's sexual health medicine, that learning never ends. There's always something new to be learned. There's always a new technique or a way to refine your technique that as a surgeon we can learn and we can improve to give better care for our patients. And conferences like this are vitally important for that continued education. And at the same time, for surgeons like Dr. Park and myself, we like to be able to spread our knowledge and be able to give our insight 
to other physicians, nurses who are trying to learn. So coming to a meeting like this really does a couple of things. It helps us be the best possible sexual health surgeons we can be, and it helps us train others. So one of my most memorable cases was a patient who came to see me, a man with erectile dysfunction who was getting married to a younger woman. He wasn't able to function sexually, and they deeply wanted that kind of relationship. The man is 92 years old. His younger wife-to-be was 88. It was a tremendously successful surgery. I continue to hear from that patient. He doesn't live in my city or my state. He came from out of state to see me. I continue to hear from that patient, and now his wife. Their sex life is tremendously fulfilling. And there they are, now at ages 93, 89, having a satisfying sex life. But it really brings home the fact that age really doesn't matter. What matters is the desire of a man to have full sexual function and to really have that part of his life, that part of his manhood restored. And to know that I can do that or that Dr. Park has the ability to do that is really satisfying. So for me, I think a really important part of providing high quality, excellent care to my patients is to have a well-trained and a well-motivated team because you and I are the, are the center of that team as the surgeons and we have to be highly trained and skilled, which you are. But I think to really provide the best treatment for the patient, we have to have a team of men and women who are devoted to excellence and care at every phase of the treatment, at every step of the treatment. And really, I know that I'm better, that my patient care delivery is better with my team on board and with them highly trained and motivated. So I think it translates into better patient care. Why did I choose to have a fellowship? Because I am able to function and to take care of patients at a high level of skill and expertise because of those physicians, those surgeons who have trained me. Dr. Stephen Wilson, Dr. Dean Knoll, who are giants, legends in the field of prosthetic urology. They've given their time and effort to support me and to help me learn as they've done for you. And so I think it's important for me to pass that on and to help train the next generation of prosthetic urologists. So it was important for me to have a fellowship to provide training as a way really of honoring those who have trained me. Dr. McCraw, who's my current fellow, sought me out because he wanted a practice, he wanted a fellowship that had a tremendously large surgical experience, that had, an, uh, that had a curriculum attached to it where he could learn to be the best prosthetic surgeon that his skills will give him to be. And by inquiring and talking to others, he heard about our fellowship, the high quality that we offer, and so he sought me out. I think that's a really, really good question because these men or these couples, they come to us, their heart is hurting, their mind is hurting because they can't function as they want. And one of the things they really want is hope. And I think you and I provide them that hope to be able to restore their sexual function, restore how they feel about themselves. So I think we always have to remember that we have to provide them hope. So we have to say that I know you have erectile dysfunction or sexual dysfunction. I can get you back and I will get you back to functioning sexually. We're going to work together, but we will get you back to function. We know we can do that because we have good treatments. We have an outstanding surgery that we know is always effective. So I think we have to provide them hope. I think we have to speak to them with confidence in our own skills so that they have confidence in us. So I think providing hope showing them that we have confidence in ourselves and showing them that we have confidence in the surgical techniques that we offer are going to make them feel better, going to give them that hope and make them feel comfortable that we can get them back to sexual function. And I think we have to be compassionate to these men because that's one of the things that you and I enjoy about medicine is that we can make a positive difference. And we use our mind and you and I also use our hands, but we can also use our heart to really help make these men's lives better. And so I think we always have to remember those things when we deal with these men.